Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, it's a word with a thousand meanings, but it keeps the volleyball team united as one. Plus, the boys of summer wrap up their fall season. We'll visit with their new head coach. All that and more right now on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Syntex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics. Hello and welcome to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got a big show for you today, including a look at one word that has united the volleyball team this season. But first, let's take a look at the highlights from the week, and we start on the pitch with men's soccer taking on I-4 rival South Florida in a big game at the UCF Soccer Complex. Let's take a look at the highlights. A good crowd on hand to see the latest battle in the war for I-4, and the fans got what they came for. A very hard-fought match between the 12th-ranked USF Bulls and the UCF Knights. Both teams combined for just 14 shots for the game. Sean Johnson picked up three saves in goal for UCF. And although the Bulls prevailed 1-0 in overtime, head coach Brian Cunningham said afterwards it was still a solid effort by his players. They've been resilient all season. We've only lost back-to-back -back games one time and uh, we've learned from those mistakes and the boys will pick it up. and. Uh, Two games this week are completely different, one a non-conference game and one a conference game, and we're excited to, to get on the road and play Tulsa for a chance to be tied for first place in the conference. The Knights then stepped back into conference and went back on the road against another ranked team, Tulsa. UCF fell to a very good Golden Hurricane team, 2-0. The Knights are still 3-2 in conference play. Meanwhile, the women's soccer team was at home for a pair of in-conference matchups. They faced Rice on Friday night, and in the first half, Alini Reyes was solid in goal. Watch the amazing leaping save here, stopping an owl opportunity. Trailing 1-0 with just 90 seconds to go, the Knights get some heroics from Daniela Dos Santos. She gets stopped on the first chance, but gets her own rebound and buries it to tie it up at one apiece. The Knights would come up short in double overtime, but a dramatic evening at the soccer complex. So UCF got the chance to take out their frustrations on the other squad from Houston, the Cougars, on Sunday. UCF picks up four first-half goals en route to a huge win over Houston. Brianna Schooley and Yvonne George scored two goals apiece. Courtney Wooden and Amanda Martirana also tallied goals. And Jesse Gardner held Houston without a goal in her first start in goal. It's a nice wipe out the Cougars 6-0, advancing to 4-2-2 two two in the league. My team, I knew we wouldn't have a problem um, because I mean we have great defenders, great forwards, and obviously offensively we did amazing. So it was just a fun game to be a part of. Meanwhile, the volleyball team was in Houston for matches with the two local conference schools. They came up short in five sets against the Houston Cougars on Friday night. Three nights racked up double-doubles in the effort. The following night, UCF met up with a very good Rice team, but the Owls prevailed in three sets. Stephanie Cerna led the team in kills with 11. The Knights come back home this week with a 13-9 overall record, 5-4 in Conference USA. The men's golf team put up a very good showing at the Prestige at PGA West in California. They came in fourth place out of 16 teams. Senior David Johnson led the way with a five under par performance for the weekend, just one stroke back of the individual leader. Back on campus, fall baseball at Bergman Field. It was the Black and Gold World Series, a three-game intra-squad set between teams drafted by the assistant coaches. And it was a great chance to see plenty of newcomers, including the Knights' new head coach, Terry Rooney. Fans and alumni made their way over to see the action, which wrapped up the fall season for the baseball team. They now have four months off until the season opener on February 20th against Virginia Commonwealth. And while baseball is still a while away, basketball has officially begun. Friday marked the official start of the basketball season, and both teams were in action on campus for their first practices. Head coach Joy Williams enters her second season at UCF with the women's team, while her counterpart with the men's team, Kirk Spira, begins season number 16 in Orlando. 
Both squads begin their respective regular seasons on November 16th, but that does not dampen the excitement. Well, our focus is the same as it always is. It's just to lock in on the fundamentals, uh, both offensively and defensively, start to put our uh, you know, techniques in on how we want to cover things defensively. Good to see basketball season's right around the corner. Stick around, plenty more to come here on UCF Sports Night. It's just one word, but it's kept the volleyball team united through an amazing season. We'll have a story on that and plenty more when UCF Sports Night returns. Fan season tickets for men's and women's basketball are on sale now. To order, call 407-823-1000 or order online at ucfathletics.com. UCF Sports Night is back in a moment. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. The volleyball team has had a remarkable first season under their new head coach, Todd Dagenet. And the story of the season goes back to the spring when the team was first trying to come up with a phrase or a word that would best represent them in the upcoming season. Well, lo and behold, it was the word united, with a little spelling adjustment, of course, that they chose to represent them on and off the floor. And it has become more than just a slogan on the back of the t-shirt. When this season came around, you know what, we need a fresh start. You know, it didn't work out too well in the fall, so let's go ahead and rename ourselves something else that means paragraphs by just this one word. We are the Knights, and we wanted to come up with a word that, you know, represents us and um, the way that we come together. And I want to say it was Callie, um, Erin Callahan, that came up, well, you know what, she would be really cool if we spell United with the K-N-I-G-H-T-E-D. And we're like, Callie, that's awesome. Like, let's do it. And so when Todd came around, we introduced it to him, just kind of being silly. We're like, hey, Todd, like, listen to what we made up. And uh, he was like, I love it. I absolutely love it. United, one, two, three. United! Gosh, like I said, it means paragraphs to us that we can just summarize with one word. We have it on the back of our shirts, and every time that we wear it, we want to represent who we are as a team. And once we're on that court, we're united. United to me is... Uh, knowing that I have 15 other people supporting me with whatever decision that I make out on the court and off the court as well. For instance, the other day we come together and we have dinners and we have parties and like it just basically means that we're one, we're a unit. Supporting each other no matter what, being built for each other, not just built for ourselves. We know when we say we're united, it means we're a family on and off the court. It means no matter what, that I've got your back, you've got mine, and it's just something that we can just kind of Look at each other and say, we are united together. You know, you're going through what I'm going through right now. If we're down by 10, you're down by 10, she's down by 10, I'm down by 10. Just because you're playing well and she's not, doesn't mean you're up by any more. You know, we are still in this together, united. It's really a family. Like, we're united as a family and as a team. We go in every time we think, you know, we never have that negative feeling of, you know, I'm going to lose or I'm going to do bad. Like, we come in, we're going to work hard, we're going to execute, and we're going to get things done. We have empathy towards each other. I understand that if somebody's not going to be doing well right now that I need to have a back and let her know, listen, we're going to get through this and we're going to get through it together. And that's what United means to us and we are able to put it actually on the court and you can see the results. As long as we keep pushing each other every day in practice, just, you know, one rep better in the drill that we did yesterday. I think that's what's going to push us over the edge and just make us this really great team that we all want to be. We all want to start something that, you know, every team from now on can just build upon and build upon and make UCF Volleyball this amazing thing, like when it was in 78 when they won the national championship. That's what we want to bring back to UCF. United! One, two, three! United! Wow, and joining us now is the man who's in charge of the UCF volleyball team, head coach Todd Dagenet. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Again, thanks for having me here. Well, we've seen how well the team has come together this season under this slogan, United, but are you surprised at how quickly they've done it? Yeah. I am and I'm not. I mean, you always hope that a group of women can get together like this in a short amount of time, but you know, it's, sometimes it just doesn't happen. But for us, it has, and you know, I think it has a lot to do with our senior leadership between Jenny Heppard and Stephanie Cerna. And 
you know, this united slogan is something that we're using to really not only unite ourselves and unite the coaching staff, but to unite many generations of players before us and hopefully the generations of players that come after us. We asked the players this, and I wanted to ask you this as well. What does that phrase, united, mean to you? Well, it just means a collection of people all getting together for the same cause. A, a players that have dedicated themselves to the principles of what we're trying to do to build this program, a coaching staff that's willing to enable those players to do that, and like I said, generations before and generations after who are going to be a part of all that. You've mentioned your senior players, Jenny Heppard and Stephanie Serna, the senior leadership you have on this team. How much responsibility do they have in making sure this team continues on its run? Well, they've had a ton because they had a lot of experience having been through the conference several times already on their own. But more importantly, just the experience of being in the day-to-day -day battles of practice, in the day-to-day -day battles of this competition, and how they're able to articulate that to the younger players has really been priceless for us. Yeah, and those younger players really have stepped up. You've got, you look out on the court and you see how experienced this team looks as though they play at some point. but. These are a lot of young players that you have on your team. There That'd are. Be pretty exciting. There are. There's a lot of young players, and there's a lot of new players to the program. And, you know, it really bodes well for the future. You know, we're getting in these five game matches, and we're winning some, and we're ending up on the short end of some. But, you know, looking out on the floor, and I see sophomore, 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 freshmen, a couple upperclassmen, and they're getting some valuable experience now that's going to pay off down the road. All right, you guys just got back from that tough road trip out to Houston playing Houston and Rice, a couple good teams you guys matched up with out there. What did the team learn from those two matches? Well, I think we learned that you know the resolve has to take place on the road, too. We saw Houston's resolve at home and, and able to beat us in five, and those are the matches that we were winning in September and October at home, and we go on the road, and Houston, you know, they were able to make the plays when they had to, so I give them a lot of credit for that. I'm going to tell you, Jeff, Rice is a real deal. I think they're a top 25 team. The way they run, as efficiently as they run, I mean, they could be a surprise come NCAA tournament time. And yeah, we are heading towards tournament time, and as we approach the conference tournament, tell us about your upcoming schedule. Well, we've got a, cu a couple tough ones coming up here. We, we, we get to play um, UAB and Memphis again, and we just had them at home not too long ago, and you know, I'm sure Memphis is you know, really chomping at the bit to get back at us, and UAB is certainly one of the top teams in the conference. Then we have to go on the road to ECU and Marshall, um, two teams that have been up and down. But um, again, those are two teams that we beat in five, and you know they want to exact some revenge. So it doesn't get any easier. We're heading back on the road again, and it seems like they're all pretty tough. All right, hopefully history will repeat itself again. Head coach Todd Dagen, UCF you. volleyball team, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we slide into the diamond. The boys of summer getting involved in fall ball. We'll check in with head coach Terry Rooney, the UCF baseball team, when we return. Fan season tickets for men's and women's basketball are on sale now. To order, call 407-823-1000 or order online at UCFathletics.com. UCF Sports Night is back in a moment. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Time now to talk a little baseball with the new head baseball coach here at UCF, Terry Rooney, heading into his first year. Coach, good to see you. Thank you very much for having me. Excited to be here today. Tell me how uh, the, your first fall here at UCF has gone so far. First fall has been great. Boy, the transition has gone very smooth. What a wonderful, terrific group of kids. And the administration has made the transition uh, even better. You know, to, when you change jobs, you change positions, it's all about people. And people are what make the transition so smooth. People are what make your job period and the people here from the administration all the way down to our players and our support staff has been fantastic and you can certainly see that within the, this athletic department and our baseball program that everybody wants to achieve at the highest level and that's our goal here in this program too. Tell me about this team on the diamond. What's its biggest strength heading into the spring? I think our strength when you look at us on paper uh, we're a veteran team in a lot of areas. I think I know right now I want, I can tell you what I want our biggest strength to be. You know, right now we're still in an evaluation process. I tell people during this fall season we have a few goals. And number one is to evaluate what our team is. And number two is to instill a style of play. And so right now I'm still in the evaluation phase, but I can tell you what our strength is going to be 
uh, come springtime, February 20th, we open up. And that is going to be a team that plays with lots of enthusiasm, lots of energy, and what I call offensive baseball. And we're going to take, uh, take an approach that we're going to bring it to the field every single day and everything that we do. So that'll certainly be one of our greatest qualities. Hitters, you got some guys coming back who are going to be pretty clutch. We have an outstanding, we have a very good offensive group, and we do, especially, we're a veteran team, especially from a position player standpoint. Uh, when you look at some names, you know, a Colin Arnold, a Kiko Vasquez, a Shane Brown, a Chris Duffy, uh, we have a lot of players who have experienced some success there at this level. But in order for this team and for this program to take the next step, those guys are going to have to have even better years, and they're on their way to doing that. How about on the mound? What's your scouting report with the pitching staff this year? You know, from a pitching staff standpoint, really I'm trying to implement a philosophy of an aggressive aggressive offensive approach with our pitching. We have some older guys who have been around the block, so to speak, you know, and a, and a Jagger Good and a Cody Allen and a Caleb Graham and Kyle Sweat. And those guys all have a pretty good understanding of how to pitch. The biggest key, whether it be a position player, whether it be a pitcher, is to understand what it takes to win at this level. Uh, on paper, we're an older team, but they have to know what it takes to win. And that's my job, and we're on the way to doing that. Black and Gold World Series in the books. You've got now four months until the start of the season, February 20th against Virginia Commonwealth. What are you doing those four months? Well, that's a great question. You know, the, during this fall, it's been an evaluation process, as I just alluded to. Now that we're getting into these winter months, we have about three and a half weeks until the uh, till Thanksgiving. It's now we're going to start to break a few kids down individually, uh, whether it be the mechanical part of it from an offensive side, their swings, etc., and from a pitching standpoint. What my goal is individually, by the time they leave here at, before Thanksgiving, is for each player to know what their strengths and what their weakness is. And it's my job and our job as a coaching staff to make sure that we maintain their strengths and improve upon their weakness. And I think that we're on our way to do that with these kids. All right, so a lot of work to do between now and the opener against Virginia Commonwealth. Head coach Terry Rooney, the UCF baseball team, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Stick around, coming up next on Sportsnet, we'll sit down with Athletic Director Keith Tribble in our Night's Talk segment, plus our top three plays of the week when UCF Sports Night returns. Fans, here's a look at upcoming night's action this week. Brought to you by UCFAthletics.com, the official site for UCF Varsity Sports. UCF Sports Night returns in a moment. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. We'll get to our Sports Night Plays of the Week in a moment. But first, it's our chance to check in with Athletic Director Keith Tribble in our Night's Talk segment. And this week, we asked Mr. Tribble, what is the current state of athletics facilities projects on campus at UCF? You know, facilities is very important for us here at UCF. Uh, you know, with the Bright House Network Stadium being completed last year and, uh, and they also the arena, it gives us two of the finest uh, facilities in the country. But on the drawing board, uh, we are just completing a new boathouse for our rowing team, which is, is going to be very, very important for their success. Uh, a training golf training center for our men's and women's golf team, uh, which is uh, located at Twin uh, Rivers here up the road. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're looking at possibly, hopefully, uh, sometime this year, or maybe as early as, um, as 2009, uh, building a track soccer stadium uh, for our uh, track program and our soccer, men's and women's soccer program. So as you can see, we have a lot of things on the docket. Um, we, you have to continue building facilities because those things are important in when you're trying to build a championship program. Time now for a look at our top three plays of the week. Play number three is from baseball, the black and gold World Series. Brandon Roman's at the plate and he goes deep. That is a home run and that certainly gives us something to look forward to come springtime. Play number two belongs to the women's soccer team from Friday night. Eleni Reyes keeping the Rice Owls grounded 
with her play in goal. Watch this remarkable save on the long shot as she leaps and takes this one down. A great play in goal by Eleni Reyes. But play number one belongs to the offense for women's soccer Sunday against Houston. Brianna Schooley rips one from way outside. Talk about going top shelf. Watch this again as she plants that one in the back of the net, continuing the onslaught in the first half against the Cougars. And those are your Sports Night Plays of the Week. It is a busy week ahead this week, and it starts on Tuesday night with volleyball. The Knights step out of conference for a meeting with Florida Gulf Coast at the venue. First serve is at 7 p.m. UCF then hits the road for a pair of conference games at Memphis on Friday and at UAB on Sunday. Men's soccer has a pair of critical conference games this week. They visit Kentucky on Wednesday night and then come back home for a matchup with SMU on Saturday night at 7 p.m. at the soccer complex. Women's soccer faces SMU at home on Friday night at 7. Then they head to Tulsa for a road date with the Golden Hurricane on Sunday afternoon. Women's tennis is back in action this week. They head up to Athens, Georgia for the ITA Southern Regionals Friday through Monday. Both golf teams are in action this week as well. The women travel to Auburn, Alabama for the Derby Invitational Friday through Sunday. The men tee off close to home in the Isleworth UCF Collegiate Invitational. That tournament runs Sunday through Tuesday. It's a football Sunday for UCF this weekend after a week off. First at noon, check out UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary on West 2 as the coach previews the game with Tulsa. Then check out the Knights in their tilt with the Golden Hurricane. Kickoff is at 8 p.m. on Sunday night. You can catch the game on ESPN or on the radio on AM 740 WQTM. Monday night, coach is back in town for the George O'Leary call-in show live from Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes at 7 p.m. on AM 540 WFLA. And as always, for all the latest news and scores from all UCF sports, check us out on the web at UCFAthletics.com, your home for UCF varsity sports 24-7. And as always, you can check out this episode and all of our previous archived episodes of UCF Sports Night online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you have to do is log on to www.ucf.tv and click on UCF Sports Night. That's all for us here at UCF Sports Night. For all of us at UCF Athletics, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thank you so much for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life.